In the NFL, sometimes things just go your way. Rarely, the stars will align and the impossible will occur. The Bills seemed all but eliminated in Week 17 of this past season until an Andy Dalton pass on fourth down saw the Bengals pass the Ravens and the Bills were in the playoffs for the first time this century. Eli Manning seemed all but sacked in Super Bowl 42 and the Patriots were going to pull it off, 19-0. Then Eli performed a Houdini act, the helmet catch was caught, and a few plays later the Patriots were undefeated no more. But these are isolated incidents. What would happen if a team caught every break for almost an entire season? Seems impossible, right? Well, in 2001, it actually happened. This is Kickoff Commentary. My name is Joshua, and welcome to Outlier Corner. With the firing of Mike Ditka after the 1992 season, the Chicago Bears' golden era was officially over. The team would only make the playoffs one time over the rest of the 1990s, capped off with an abysmal 1997-2000 run, where the team lost at least 10 games each season and finished last in their division every single time. However, in 2001, something strange happened. The season started off normally enough. They lost to the defending champion Baltimore Ravens in the opener. However, after that, the Bears started to win. A lot. They won six games in a row before finally losing to their hated rival, the Green Bay Packers. After this, they didn't slow down and won three more in a row. They lost to Green Bay again, and once again were not troubled as they won four more in a row. The Bears had just gone from last place in their division four years running to 13-3 with the second best record in the NFL. How did they do it? Let's start by looking at the top. The Bears were underneath third-year head coach Dick Duran, who is most famous for a few years later pulling off a poor man's Jason Garrett with the Bills by going 7-9 three years in a row. This season was a massive outlier for Dick Duran as it was the only season of his career where he posted a winning record in the NFL. In fact, if we remove 2001, Jaron has one of the 20 worst win percentages in NFL history. If you're wondering the worst, it would be Burt Bell, who coached the Eagles and the Steelers to a laughable .179 win percentage. He later went on to become the NFL Commissioner and is now in the NFL Hall of Fame. So clearly, Bill Belichick, Dick Jaron is not, so let's see who was the quarterback of those Bears. The Bears were led on the field by Jim Miller, a Steelers sixth round pick in 1994 who made 2001 his first year as a full-time starter. He was 28th in the league in passing yards, 24th in touchdowns, 25th in passer rating, and 21st in completion percentage. This was his best season. He didn't attempt another pass after 2002. So with quarterback and coach out, let's see if the running back was a difference maker. The Bears starting running back was Anthony Thomas. Thomas had a very solid 1,183 yards and 7 touchdowns and won Rookie of the Year over Hall of Famer LaDainian Tomlinson. This was with most players in the 2001 Bears roster, Thomas's best season. The Bears' best wide receiver was Marty Booker, who set the franchise record with 100 catches for 1,071 yards and 8 touchdowns. Booker improved in 2002 with 1,189 yards into Pro Bowl and was in the league until 2009. With Marty Booker and Anthony Thomas as the 0-1 Bears' only real offensive weapons, that team was, as all great Bears teams, led by their defense. The Bears had three All-Pros this season, all of them on the defensive side of the ball. Linebacker Brian Erlacher, safety Mike Brown, and defensive tackle Ted Washington. That's a decent level of talent, but it's not really enough for a team to usually go 13-3. What the Bears did have in spades was amazing luck. Week 7, the Bears were down by 15 points with 4 minutes left. They were able to force overtime. On the first play of overtime, Hall of Fame wide receiver Terrell Owens tipped the ball into the air and safety Mike Brown ran underneath it and ran it back for a touchdown to give the Bears over the win. Week 8, something even crazier happens. The Bears are down by 14 with 28 seconds left. They score a touchdown to cut the lead to 7. To force overtime, the Bears have to recover an onside kick and score in less than 30 seconds. They pull it off and score the final touchdown at the buzzer on a Hail Mary. On the 7th play of overtime, a pass is once again tipped, Mike Brown runs underneath it, and the Bears win on a pick 6. Pause. Before or after these two games, no team has ever reported any kind of touchdown in overtime in back-to-back -back weeks. The odds of a team winning back-to-back -back overtime games on a pick six is .000405%. And Mike Brown had just done it himself. We will never see this again. Week 12, Lions kicker Jason Hansen misses three field goals, the Bears win 13-10. Hansen had at least four seasons in his NFL career when he missed three or less field goals the entire season, and he had just missed three in one game. 
Week 15, Bears beat Redskins 20-15, score go-ahead touchdown on a fluke field goal pass from the punter to Brian Erlacher. But if Mike Brown's interceptions, Jason Hansen's missed field goals, and Brian Erlacher's receiving touchdown were not enough to convince you that the Bears had all the luck on their side, something happened in Week 17 that truly proved that the universe was with them. Who had the longest interception of this season for the Bears, would you think? Maybe Mike Brown, Brian Erlacher, neither. It was Keith Trailer. Keith Trailer is a 6'2", 340-pound behemoth of a defensive tackle. On a Jacksonville Jaguar screen pass, he tipped the pass into the air and took the ball 67 yards in the other direction. If a 340-pounder going 70 yards the other way isn't luck, what is? Unfortunately for the Bears, much like in the film Angels in the Outfield, you have to do it yourself when it really matters. The Bears were bested by the Eagles 33-19 in the divisional round and the miracle season was over. But hey, the team went 13-3. Most of the core is young. The future in Chicago is bright. In 2002, the Bears went 4-12. Every notable player, except for Mike Brown and Brian Erlacher from the 2001 run, were gone by the time the team made the playoffs again in 2006. What went wrong after 2001? Was it the players regressing back to their norms? Was it their luck was simply not there? Maybe. But what I think it was is the renovations. Renovations occurred at Soldier Field after their loss to the e Eagles and went through to the beginning of the next season. These renovations destroyed Soldier Field's mojo. These renovations changed the stadium so much that it was removed from the National Register of Historic Places. This angered with the football gods and the Bears were smited for it. Or maybe 2001 was just a massive fluke and the Bears were never that good to begin with. Either way, even though the 2001 Bears are usually an afterthought in the NFL today, we'll always have the video of Keith Trailer's monster run. Thanks for watching.